species that you may not have heard of that are extremely important in our ocean ecosystems. Join me today as we meet the humbled squid. Now, I have a very special treat for you guys. One of my colleagues, Dr. Toad of Aquatic Sciences, or the Quack Doctor as they call him, will be briefing and introducing you guys to our favorite friend, the humbled squid. So, I actually forgot to mention something kind of important, and that's that y'all are gonna have to go for a ride. You see, Professor Toad actually lives 200 meters below the surface um, at a secret hidden laboratory where he studies the humble squid in its natural habitat. So, in order to get you guys down there, we need the latest and greatest of submersible technology. That's why we got these uh, pretty cool subs back here that we're gonna lease out to you guys, so make sure to take good care of them. Let's get you hitched up. Enjoy the ride, close your eyes, imagine the ocean as it is, because you're gonna be with us. Don't look outside your port window because you might get a little scary, just gonna be honest. So, let's get you guys uh, hitched up and ready to go. Corey? Where's that guy? Welcome to the Bubble Dance. We're off. Sit back, grab your popcorn, and enjoy the show. Submerging wow, crab. this is going really fast. Going down to 100 meters. Hey, is that a, is that a squid I see? 200 meters. Bubble decks. What's that creature? Initiating scanning. Target located. Humboldt, the swarming squid creature. Humboldt squid are known to have extremely sharp beaks and a fascinating warrior culture. Reinitiating. We've arrived at Dr. Toad's lab. Thank you for choosing to ride the tough sub. Please watch your step on the way out. Come back soon. Why, hello there and welcome. I am your friendly neighborhood professor, Professor Toad. And um, today we're going to talk about something very, very interesting. One of my most favorite creatures in the entire sea, the Humboldt squid. I've been uh, very kindly invited by that very handsome man over the queue, um, our bathtub enthusiast, quite so, that um, he wants me to come and to talk to you guys about um, this particular creature. So let's get right into it. First of all, its scientific name or Latin name is Dorsidicus gigas. And um, this is only so uh, important as to give us the reason for why it was named, gigas being large, right? So in English, we call it the jumbo squid. And uh, in Spanish, it is called Diablo Rojo, which is a direct translation of red devil. And the reasoning for this is because um, when they interact with fishermen, 
like the, a lot of the Mexican shrimpers out there, they actually turn red in order to um, intimidate them and try to fight them off, right? So they have an impression as being red devils. Very interestingly, um, when most people think of an octopus or a cephalopod, right? They think of those squid, octopi, they think of cuttlefish, they think of a lot of different creatures that are rather timid. They think of creatures that are, would rather pull back, you know, try to escape their predators, use those camouflaging abilities to escape, or maybe even use some ink and, and water just to push themselves away right, while they deceive their enemy. And um, they're generally perceived to be very intelligent creatures that are generally um, avoidant of conflict. The humble squid is a little bit different from these creatures, named after the famous explorer Alexander von Humboldt and the current from which it was found, the Humboldt current. The Humboldt squid is actually very, very aggressive. And um, not only are they aggressive, they are quite large, hence the name Jumbo. They come in at about six feet in length and um, <laughs> they're also about 120 pounds up to um, in the customary system, which is quite large. Um, not to mention that these things swim at about 15 miles per hour, which is about three times faster than the fastest human that was ever recorded without a monofin. Michael Phelps at 8.8 .8 with a booster monofin, it got about 8.8 .8 miles per hour, but you and me, 5.6 is about the you know, max that most humans can achieve. So these things are very fast, they're mean, they are big, and they are heavy. More than that, even more importantly than that, they travel in shoals or social groups of more than 1,200 individuals. That's right, 1,200 individuals. Imagine all of these six foot long blokes coming towards you, swarming you and eating parts of you. That is thalassophobia incarnate. That is a reason to be afraid of scuba diving, right? And that's why I'm an academic and he's the tub diver. But um, thank you so much for having me on the show today. I really do quite appreciate it. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to see you all very soon and I'll be featured on the channel more often. So toodaloo and cheers. Thank you, Professor Quack. Looking good as always. Of course, the Humboldt's still nothing compared to our favorite giant squid in terms of weight and size, which weighs up to 275 kilograms or about 610 pounds. And even that is little compared to the colossal squid, which weighs up to 495 kilograms, or what you would say a whopping 1,091 pounds. But the Humboldt squid's pretty tough, and it's definitely not something we should trifle with. These creatures are also commonly found at depths of about 150 to 800 meters, and they're spreading north of the Pacific Northwest. We see them in Tierra del Fuego, Mexico, Chile, and Peru, even in Monterey Bay, California, all the way up to British Columbia and Puget Sound. They can be found all the way from Chile to Alaska, as we talked about previously, inside of the Humboldt Current. Another really interesting thing about the Humboldt squid is that they are social, like most cephalopods. Mbari, where the Monterey Bay Research Institute has been studying these creatures for years. They feature special chromatophores like other cephalopods, which allow them to change color and flash to communicate. Now, based on what we can see, they're also quite intelligent, like other cephalopods, right? When we look at the way that they're communicating, we can see that there's some sort of cross-talking platform going on in between them. Now, what they're exactly saying, we're still trying to figure that out. Another cool difference between piranhas and humble squid, piranhas don't practice cannibalism. That's right, humble squid do. If a member of their species is weak or dying or sick, they're attacked and purged quite quickly. This is because they are called opportunistic feeders. This is a behavioral trait that these squid exhibit that most ocean creatures simply do not. These creatures also eat other cephalopods, including octopi and squid, as well as large fish and shrimp. They've even been seen eating small sharks. Now, what eats them? You'd think of sharks, you'd probably think of porpoises, seals, and sperm whales. You'd be right. In addition to that, their biggest predator is the swordfish. That's right, humans are also predators as well. The Mexican fishing industry used to bring in about 19 tons of humble squid per year in 1980. But now it's about 9,000 tons a year. So this leads us to kind of question, all right, 
there was so much coming in at one point and there's not so much now. So are there less squid in the ocean now as opposed to then? So in terms of conservation status, it's not yet known what the abundance is of this species. Since the 1970s, we've actually seen a very profound increase in commercial fishing um, off the Pacific coast of these creatures. These squids are also used for bait, and some people even eat them canned. Humboldt squid are also easily attracted by light sources, almost like moths, because they feed on lantern fishes, which exhibit light. So all you really have to do is shine a light in front of them, and they'll usually come towards you. Now the question remains whether humble squid will continue to be a problematic species that could potentially invade other ecosystems, or if they will need protection from human exploitation. At the current moment, it's not really known. Do you have any thoughts on this jumbo squid from the abyss? Drop a comment below. What would you do if you saw one? Or if you met 1200 all at once? Now, an interesting study that was also published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America also predicted in 2008 that ocean acidification actually has a pretty profound impact on metabolism and a lot of behavioral traits of a lot of different species. In 2008, it was predicted that ocean acidification due to greenhouse gases will lower the Humboldt squid's metabolic rate by almost a third and its physical activity by almost one half. Well, you might ask yourself, okay, well, why is this important, right? Aside from environmental conservation, why does this matter? Well, this could actually force the squid to potentially relocate to shallower waters in which oxygen is more abundant. Now, <laughs> there's a lot of controversy surrounding this study and a lot of people who say that um, the ocean acidification effects will perhaps not be as pronounced on this species. But many marine biologists do concede that there is a possibility that this very aggressive and slightly problematic species could be observed attacking recreational divers and even swimmers later on in the future as they come up from that 200 meter depth mark. It's not impossible that we'll be seeing some more uh, humble squid attacks on recreational prey namely humans. This is why we need to know more about the humble squid. Isn't that right, Bold and Brash? Anyways, thanks for joining me on today's episode of The Tub. This is the first episode of our series, which will be covering a lot of different, very interesting and fascinating sea creatures. So please hit the like button if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and I'll catch you on the next episode of Tub Life. Was that good? Oh man, what a first take. Okay, yeah, we messed up because with all the water and stuff, you can kind of touch a button and then it just it's a mess. Oh, and I almost forgot. Make sure to check out our parent website, Meridis.com, to cop some of the greatest merch out there. Also, you know, it's sustainable and some of your purchase goes to Oceana International, the largest nonprofit dedicated to ocean conservation in the entire world. Clean looks, clean vibes, clean oceans. I'll catch you next time. Hi, you're coming to Squidward. <laughs> <laughs>